Hi everyone, Richard Tubb here with episode 13 of Tub Talk, the podcast for IT consultants. Now, a very special episode today. I'm talking with Paul McNeil, the MD of Virage, a Melbourne-based managed service provider and also the co-founder of Ysync. Now, Paul is one of a group of really talented IT entrepreneurs that I've spoken with over the past 12 months or so. And I include Eric Dosel at Bright Gauge, Phil Claxton of Desk Director and Chris Day of IT Glue in that group, all of whom I've interviewed on this podcast too. And they're all linked in the fact that they're all very smart individuals who have effectively experienced uh, a challenge within their own managed service provider business, which they've not only resolved for themselves, but then gone on to productize that solution and offer it for sale to other IT companies, effectively creating a new and separate business as a result. So in Paul's case, the challenge was managing the synchronization of data between his IT company's professional services automation tool, ConnectWise, and their accounting package. Uh, And I speak from experience in my previous life owning an IT business when I say that synchronization of that nature can be a nightmare. Uh, You need to transfer the data regularly and accurately between the two systems. It's an absolute necessity for a growing IT business, but it can be an absolute pain in the backside if it doesn't go right. Uh, And Paul has resolved that issue with Ysync, his startup business, and we talk about how he's achieved that in our interview. Now, I say this is a special episode because, quite frankly, I think what Paul shares in this interview is gold for any IT business owner listening. Paul also gives the most compelling argument I've heard yet for why IT businesses should be moving to cloud accounting packages like Xero and how they can help their customers to do the same. This is also a special episode because our interview is almost an hour in length and I've published it out of schedule. Uh, Frankly, just because I wanted to get it out there for you to listen to. At an hour in length, that's probably twice what you'd normally expect from this podcast. But frankly, Paul and I talked a lot longer than that. And I wanted to let you eavesdrop on as much of our conversation as was possible. Uh, And to help get this episode out so quickly, Paul actually stepped up and Ysync sponsored the production of this episode, which I'm really, really grateful for. I said last episode, there are costs involved in producing this podcast. And so Paul helping to defer those costs, I think, speaks to the nature of his personality for helping others. Uh, He's a real thought leader and a go-giver. But don't just take my word for it. Have a listen to our interview and hear for yourself. I hope you enjoy my interview with Paul McNeil. Hi everyone, Richard Tubb here with an interview and I'm talking today to Paul McNeil. Now, Paul's the Managing Director of Virage IT, a managed service provider based in Melbourne, Australia. Paul's also the co-founder of Ysync, a cloud-based integration service that synchronizes accounting data between ConnectWise and cloud accounting software like Xero and QuickBooks Online. Now, Paul's got an extensive background in both IT and project management, and he's had a career that's seen him provide business process consultancy uh, that's helped businesses in Australia to manage system performance, improve reporting, and business intelligence. And amongst his business achievements, Paul has been recognized with a spot on the MSP Mentor 501, uh, is ranked number six global small business, and number 24th in the AANZ region. So I'm delighted to have Paul join us on the show today from Dan Hunter. How are you today, Paul? Great. Thanks, Richard. And it's, look, it's a, it's a pleasure to be on your show. Uh, number one fan alongside you know, a number of other people out there that listen to your podcast. So it's certainly great to be here and, and to have a, an open conversation about what we're here for. Well, I'm really pleased you could join us today. Thank you for getting up early. It's late in, late in the night here in the UK, early in the morning there in Melbourne. So I do appreciate you uh, taking the time. So I'd, I'd like to start out really by understanding your background as Managing Director of Virage IT. Uh, what led you to becoming Managing Director of an MSP? Well, I think it, it's certainly one of those things that if we take a step back and look at probably how most technicians start out in business, you know, I was a, a young guy working for an accounting firm in Australia and I looked at the opportunity to start a, you know, an IT consultancy business on the back of a it was an SBS 2000 install back then and I saw this as an opportunity. I could do that. I could take this opportunity and start up my own business, entrepreneurial flair. And here I was thinking, you know, it's going to be easy to, to start a business. So that was 2002 and here we are close to 13 years later, actually over 13 years now, uh, looking at the global markets and the opportunities that present for MSPs with, you know, great excitement and somewhat trepidation as well. But 
my start in the managed services industry was basically as a as a result of seeing that opportunity and, and grabbing it with both hands and going along for the ride. Mm. Now, I'm, I'm really intrigued, actually, because you've got a background in business process, as I alluded to in your introduction there. You've also got a lot of experience in accounting. How did that lead to you not only being the MD of a managed service provider in Virage, but also co-founding WiseSync? Well, that's, I guess if we have a look at the natural progression of business process, it's about looking for, for systems and improving performance. So virage is actually a French word. It's a French word that means to turn. And we looked at, um, you know, when we were branding or going through our exercise of branding uh, a couple of years ago, when we, when we formed the business virage, we actually came up with the idea of performance efficiency results. And that's our, I guess, our byline for our brand promise. And part of that is really understanding when we work with businesses who are our managed services customers that we're not there just to get their outlook working or fix printers we're actually looking at how we help them to turn their efficiencies around because unlocking technology can often result in improved profitability and if you think about it from an altruistic perspective if you help your customers to become more profitable there too you become more profitable in your own rights because you're helping your customers to grow thereby increasing your own demand so certainly the accounting side was naturally a, a focal point from my perspective I came out of I uh, worked closely with a, a global peak body called CPA Australia and I was uh, instrumental in developing a, an application that was used in that business to manage a $20 million business unit and we were doing forecasting and financial modelling and, and all those wonderful things that an accountant would get excited about but I wasn't necessarily completely an accounting body, I wanted to be someone who could help businesses achieve more do more with less that whole concepts and that's something that's really becoming more apparent so it was probably around 2012 when we were building Virage as a business that I realized that cloud accounting was really starting to become a common theme and having an accounting background and working closely with accountants for a number of years I saw the opportunity there that this, these technologies that were coming through and Zero was a really early um, adopter in, in the Australian market I you know, first met one of the founders of Zero back in 2009. So this is, you know, three years effectively after they, you know, formed the business and created their first product. So it was very early days, but I could see just how they were actually shaping the way their product would work and what they were doing differently against other products that were in the market, whether that's QuickBooks or whether it's Sage or whether it's in our local um, industry here in Australia, it's MYOB. And what I found was that they were changing the way the process worked, and being a you know, process, um, you know, being a process person, I really wanted to focus on how that would actually work from an accounting perspective for our MSP. We were growing; it was becoming more and more of a pain point for our business managing that financial transfer across from Connectwise into our desktop accounting system. It was clunky; it took a lot of time, and we were starting to see that. Well, if we're going to have more work and our growth would increase we would have to put more staff on and it just didn't make sense so when I started looking at the cloud I started to understand that there would be more efficiencies and the only challenge we had it was there was no integration so if we were going to use cloud accounting in our business we would have to either find someone to write the integration for us or potentially uh, write it ourselves and naturally we took the latter path and we're now talking close to two years later. We have a, a pretty much a global platform used by over 250 partners. And that's, that's Ysync. Ysync is about helping businesses to move to the cloud. So, so let's dig a little bit deeper on something you said there about the cloud accounting packages. Now, uh, I think given your background, and certainly for myself and, and for a lot of listeners to this podcast, um, been brought up using, uh, dare I say, traditional accounts packages like Sage and QuickBooks. So why did you make the move to cloud accounting? If you could summarize what the benefits of cloud accounting over those traditional packages, what did you see in it? Well, it's interesting, Richard, because um, one of the key things, and, and I'm actually, I've done a number of sessions called Upside Down Accounting, and that's one of the sessions I'm presenting at IT Nation this year. And that session is about how cloud accounting is changing the way businesses actually manage and maintain information that they need to keep from a compliance perspective, whether it's tax or whether it's payroll or whatever it may be. 
And zero is really at the front of this upside down movement. And it, if I, I don't want to get too in depth, but in the summary sense of it, it's all about bank reconciliations. And if you're an accountant, you probably know what I'm talking about. It's the reconciliation of your bank statement lines to the transactions that are affected in your accounting system, whether that's Sage or whether it's uh, QuickBooks Online or Xero, every, every system has some form of reconciliation. But if you stack up all the systems side by side and look at the processes, you'll see that most of them have double and triple handling of that single piece of information. Whereas Xero changed that by actually bringing the reconciliation to the top, turning it upside down, which in turn means that it reduces the steps. Reduce time, reduce effort, reduce process. That means that you save time, effort, and money. And for us, that was a big step. We doubled in size through acquisition. We acquired another business, and it was a huge growth curve for us. We went from $1.3 million to a $2 million business overnight, and we actually reduced our admin team by half through having a more efficient, effective process for back of house. If you understand your financials in business, you would probably understand that if you can reduce non-recoverable staff, that goes straight to the bottom line. And that was really critical for our performance to make that happen. So moving to the cloud delivered on that specific outcome and it was through process re-engineering by doing something different. And that's what Xero really changed for the market. If we look at desktop accounting systems, you know, we came off a desktop platform and the, the challenge that we had was running it. It was, you know, it's taking up uh, resource space on our terminal server. We had to keep throwing resources at it, more RAM, more RAM, more RAM. It just became this hungry beast as our database grew. And where cloud obviously is everywhere. So you've got, you know, you can use an iPad, you can use a MacBook, you can use a Windows device, even an Android. You can use anything to access that platform because it is obviously web delivered. So the flexibility for people to become more mobile, to work from home, to work abroad, even to work collaboratively with your accountant. We used to think it was a, a nightmare to send our accounting file to our accountant. So every quarter we'd have to pack our file up in a zip file and we'd have to ship it off to our accountant. They would open it up. They would do their end of, end of quarter reconciliations for our tax requirements. Then they would send it back to us. And it was a disaster. As we got bigger, that, that pain became more. And what we wanted to do is we wanted to reduce that because that meant time and time is money. Wow. You know, for the last sort of three minutes or so, um, I would challenge anybody to go back and listen to that because you've just given in a nutshell <laughs> such a compelling reason to move away from the desktop accounting across to the uh, the cloud base so for any msps listening to that you know rewind this bit of the podcast take a note of what paul said there because if you want to go out to your clients and actually talk about cloud accounting and the benefit i think you know you've just summarized that there thank you so much paul now Let's dig a little bit deeper there because I myself use uh, Zebra uh, and I also use Cashflow, um, you know, a UK based uh, cloud accounting package. I'm seeing a lot of resistance from accountants uh, here in the UK to cloud accounting packages like Xero. Uh, they seem to prefer to stick with Sage. And I guess there's a number of MSPs, IT companies, uh, IT consultants who listen to this may uh, understand uh, the benefits of cloud accounting packages, may want their clients to move in that direction, but their clients are going by what their accountants say. And if the accountants want to stick with the desktop accounting packages, um, that's going to prove an obstacle. What advice would you have to give to uh, IT businesses who are in that situation? That's a really great question, Richard. And I think probably the most important thing to look at is, is what drives human behavior. And before I get into my psychology routines of understanding what people do and the reasons why they do it, change is a frightening prospect. That's the one thing that I can really say. Uh, if I look at the, the history of accounting as an industry, it's been very restrictive. It's been very um, slow to move in change. If you look at the way that that industry operates, it's compliance driven. It's all about managing information in a restricted and a conformed way. So if we think about an accountant, accountants tend to be less willing to accept change, less willing to accept risk. So they stick with what they know. And one of the things that we found in our business by making the transition to a cloud accounting product was just the efficiencies that we could see in the dealings that we had with it, with our accountant. 
And one of the, I guess, the basis is behind that is we actually then selected an accountant based on their willingness to work with that technology platform. So I'm not saying that you should change accounting firms because of that, but what I'm saying is that look at whether or not the accounting firm that you're working with is actually able to provide you with the services and support that drive you into the next millennium, the next phase of your business. Because for us, it's about, it's technology. It's about now. We're in that industry of, of change and evolution. And if we stick in what is current from a, an accounting standpoint, we're never going to move forward. We're never going to get the efficiencies that we need. And that's going to hold us back. Our industry has been compressed, compressed in margins, compressed in competition, compressed and commoditized in the value of the service that we provide. And I'm seeing that every single day through our own MSP that we're competing against companies that are offering services through offshoring, lower cost, but passing that straight through, devaluing their own services and the own the own support that they provide. And that's one of the things that if you're compressing these areas, you're reducing your margins, you're reducing your profitability, you need to start looking at savings across your business. And having efficiencies in back of house functions can be one of those areas that you can actually get real value. So um, reducing efficiencies is, is key. And it came back, if I use a little anecdote, if I can, or an experience, Richard, when I was at a, a ConnectWise user group, it was probably only about six months after we launched Ysync. And it was one of those things, we weren't sure of how this thing was going to go. We had about 35 partners at this stage. It was a new business. It was an idea that we had that we just didn't expect it was going to become a business in its own right. We had an idea it would be a product and that it would be something that Virage would probably sell and potentially obviously go to market with, but we just didn't expect the level of engagement that we had. And really the tipping point or the turning point where we realized this product had global reach and, and significant potential was when one of the ConnectWise partners, his name was Mick, and Mick came up to me. I didn't know him from, uh, from anything. I'd never seen him before, never met him before, didn't even realize he was a customer. He came up and he just stuck his hand out and he said, mate, I've got to thank you so much. You saved me $50,000 a year. I'm like, well, hang on, who are you and what have you done? What, how did we do this? <laughs> and he said to me, he goes, Paul, you have no idea the process changes and the efficiencies that this created. And he's a guy that he's, he's one of three people in his business, very small business. He was able to reduce his headcount by one and that reduced his admin overhead. He was able to take on an administrative nightmare simply and efficiently. And that meant that he was able to save money in his business. 50000 in his pocket was a big difference in his bottom line. I think it's a big difference in most people's bottom line, isn't it? So Absolutely. That's, that's a great story. Yeah. Let, let's talk a little bit more about cost savings from the cloud. You, you shared a story with me before about uh, PowerNet IT consultants, um, a business with 50 staff who made the move from a, a traditional uh, desktop accounts package and ERP to ConnectWise and Zero, and made huge savings. So for, for the benefit of the listeners, perhaps could you share that story a bit? Certainly, and I don't know how far we want to go back, but if I take you back to the time where I actually met Nick at, um, at one of the ConnectWise user groups, I was presenting upside down accounting. So this was early days, 2013, when we were talking about how the cloud was changing and what we were doing from an accounting standpoint. And what pricked his ears up was the way in which we managed our financial information flows from ConnectWise. So for the ConnectWise partners out there, if you're not using procurement and inventory, you have to start using it because that's about that's one of the key efficiency drivers in our business. And I spoke about uh, in that particular case how we even put the cookies in the kitchen through ConnectWise. So when we buy anything, everything gets procured through our procurement module in ConnectWise, whether it's general expenses for uh, operational requirements or supplies for the kitchen for that matter. And his ears prepped up and he was like, I want to hear more about this. And he approached me after the session and said, we're a 50 user business. We're moving from a, another ERP platform, which is um, entirely contained. So we don't have any other systems. It costs us a fortune to run this platform. We're looking, we're moving to ConnectWise. We're implementing Quasal. We were thinking of QuickBooks, but I now, I'm not sure if that's the right 
decision or if that's the right answer to our problem. And I asked him to explain, well, what is it that you're looking for? And he said, we're multi-office, so we've got three offices in Australia. We have one in New Zealand. We trade in multiple currencies. We want to see roll-up reporting from our profit and loss in our balance sheet. We want to manage de depreciation for all of our cloud infrastructure and data centers across Australia. We want to have all this information and we want it to be easy. Could you do that inside of Xero? We're remembering that this is a 50 user business. So probably turnover at that stage was more than 15 million Australian dollars. So decent size. At that time, we actually sat down and we mapped out what would be required. And that business transition from their existing ERP system to ConnectWise, Quozal and Xero. And through that process, they were actually able to reduce their staff and operational efficiencies. So they created more efficiencies. But not only that, their, their licensing costs alone reduced by tens of thousands of dollars because they were able to implement an accounting system that was now costing them $1,000 a year. And that wasn't user restricted. So not only were they getting licensing cost reductions, they were also getting staff cost reductions. And I catch up with them quite frequently just to understand what they're doing because I love to talk to other businesses about where they're going and the challenges that they're facing and other areas that we can help to improve our product because that's how we actually deliver the most value. And what, what they've just said is why sync for us is just, it's changed the way we do business. The zero reporting is phenomenal. The roll-up reporting from companies like Spotlight Reporting is fantastic. They've got departmental reports that they can run to see operational efficiencies across both um, state and location and also department. So their business unit reporting capabilities from zero delivered out of the box through that integration. So it doesn't matter whether you're a one-man band working and turning over you know, 100,000 pounds or you know, $100,000 or if you're turning over 20 plus million, Xero has scaled exceptionally well across businesses of all size, currency and location. So it's just one of those things that we've been able to actually identify in our business model and say, great, well, here's a platform that will outscale us. And that's powerful. Yeah, that, I mean, that's a powerful story that you shared there. And I know for the benefit of um, anybody listening here who wants to dig more into that, I guess it's a, a case study, isn't it, that you've got listed on the uh, the Ysync website there for PowerNet. Would that be right? Yeah, absolutely. If you visit our website, www.ys-sync.com, um, jump onto the partner stories. There's four video stories there of various different partners, HTG partners, uh, partners that have just changed the way they do their business management and their financial back end from desktop accounting to cloud. And the stories are compelling. Yeah. And I'll, uh, for the benefit of listeners, I'll make sure that the links to those stories are in the show notes as well on the blog. So uh, but let's talk a little bit more about Xero. So here in the UK, I'm seeing a boom in small businesses using Xero. Now, when I say small businesses, I mean uh, end customers, not necessarily IT businesses. Um, as, a, as a business, I think they've got a really thriving community, uh, the Xero community. What's your experience uh, with Ysync and Xero been? What's the partnership there like? Well, the partnership's actually phenomenal in terms of a, a product and a platform. Uh, for us as developers, the support has been outstanding. So, you know, and I, I really think that is just their focus on the ecosystem. So, um, you know, I remember talking to Hamish Edwards at, it was a, a co convention in Australia called ATSA, which is basically an accounting convention for technology. And at that event, this was back in 09, I was talking to Hamish and I said, so what's your strategy and where are you going? You know, your product's so lightweight. There's not many features, Hamish. How are you going to really, how are you going to take on the QuickBooks and the MYBs and the, the Sages of the, of the market, these Goliaths? And his answer was, we're building a platform, Paul. And what we're going to do is we're going to build an ecosystem around it. What you're going to get from us is the core. And what you'll be able to then get from the the ecosystem will be what you need. So then there'll be specialist companies that will connect in with us. And that was the seed that was planted back in 09. A specialist company that could fill a gap or a void to provide a more extensive level of support or a solution. And that was, I guess, the, the anticipus of, of Ysync, where that came from. And if I look at the API, it's built for programmers. So our development team here in Melbourne, Australia, work closely with the API team who they've even got representations here in Melbourne too for us to work with. So from a development community, outstanding. From a, a 
an educational standpoint, the content and the availability of information on the Zero website is brilliant. And one of the things that comes up quite often when I'm talking to other business owners about Zero and, and the way that their business model works is they often say, well, they don't have phone support. And I think it's a brilliant idea because it forces you to actually look for information. You know, if you have to jump on and log a ticket, it takes longer to log a ticket and get a reply than what it may to self-remediate, to find the information that you sell. And in the, probably the six years that you know, I've seen Zero, and in the four years that we've really been using it, I had a number of businesses on Zero before we moved our main MSP, um, because we didn't have Ysync for that matter, was we've only had to log a couple of support incidents, and that's been about anomalies in, in bank reconciliations. That stood out like the proverbial. So we've gone back to Zero and said, hey, this doesn't look right. Can you tell us what's going on? They've been able to dig into the system and see what's going on and correct that for us. In those cases, we've had a two-day resolution. You can't ask more than that, and that's one of the things that we've found. The support is exceptional, but the benefit is, from our perspective, the product itself is simple and easy to use. So we've seen managed service companies, if I go back now to a little bit about the type of people that we've that use Zero, you mentioned small businesses, and small businesses is their market. So when we were looking at Zero as a viable business platform for our business, we had to make a decision. It's like, is this platform going to scale well? Everything about their website is about small micro business, you know, moving from the, the shoebox of receipts to a, a, an online platform and you can do that cost effectively. If we just rewind a few minutes and go back to the story about PowerNet, there's a vast difference between a business with four offices in two countries trading in two currencies with 50 staff processing payroll in a platform that's designed for a company that's moved from a shoebox to an online platform. It's almost like they don't connect. And that's one of the things that's brilliant is Zero has been built to cope with enterprise transactions. So to cope with that size of business. But they're marketing at the small business. And you don't need a Harvard business to you don't need a Harvard business degree to understand why. The answer is there's eleven million businesses in that small to medium sized business space. If you're looking at enterprise systems, that number goes down to you know probably less than a million. So your opportunities are far greater at that small business space. And that's just looking at smaller regions like Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. The US is a whole different world. And I think that's where you're seeing a lot of the, the press, a lot of the coverage about zero entering that market space in the US. And it has been hard for them because the US is so slow to move. If you, look at, if you know anything about taxation in the US, there's over, I think it's 7,600 taxation authorities. You and I have a simple tax model, VAT or GST for us. It's a flat rate tax. It probably changes on maybe the different types of products that you buy and sell. In the US, it can change based on the city that it's sold into. And that's just a, a nightmare trying to manage it and administer that. And, and certainly from a ConnectWise standpoint, Ysync's been built to support that level of complexity and taxation as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. So I want to dig a little bit deeper into the Zero community and what the opportunities are for, for IT businesses there. So I'm quite fortunate. Uh, I work with a lot of very progressive, forward-thinking MSPs, and they're going out there and they're, they're embracing cloud accounting such as Zero, um, and uh, helping their clients come on board with that as well. Yet I was speaking to one of my clients who's really made a business out of Zero. In fact, I'll give him a name check, Jonathan Fox, the MD of uh, Flying Fox IT and MSP based in East Sussex. Uh, and Jonathan was saying when he attended the ZeroCon, uh, the conference for Zero Partners uh, in the UK recently, he was flabbergasted to find he was just about the only IT business there. So I guess my question for you, Paul, is are MSPs missing a trick by not getting involved in, in cloud integration? I think it's a really interesting one. It's a really interesting name, Flying Fox. You know, we all love a good <laughs> Flying Fox. But, you know, for us, it's about the opportunities there in any vertical market are defined as, as basically what you want to make in it. And it's fantastic to see Jonathan looking at that market, participating as a vendor at the ZeroCon. Was he a vendor or was it more just a, an opportunistic? He went along to see what was going on. 
No, I mean, he's uh, Jonathan and his business there, they partnered up with a, a bookkeeper and accounting business there to basically to offer cloud integration um, services to um, to both sets of clients under both uh, parties there. So it's an old model, isn't it, actually? You know, uh, you and I go back uh, a while and we look in the US especially, you can see accountants and uh, IT companies teaming up. But I, I guess, Jonathan's, you know, uh, Flying Fox are taking that to the, uh, to the market from the cloud integration perspective. So he was there both as a, a zero user and as a zero partner. Well, that's fantastic. And to have that level of connection with a vertical market, I've seen that happen and work really well here in Australia. In fact, there's another company in Australia called Technology for Accountants. You can probably understand with a business name like that what their vertical is. But they definitely focus in on that vertical and they definitely are present in those types of, of events because they potentially are your best clients. They're the, the progressive uh, industry. They're looking at new opportunities and new technologies and finding your position inside of that market. This is a huge growth market. If I look at the numbers when we first looked at Zero, and I don't want to keep harping on just Zero alone because there are other cloud accounting platforms doing great things too. But if I look at what Zero was when we started, we signed up, there was 47,000 partners. So 47,000 partners, that was 2000 and. 10 it was, we first signed up to zero with some of our service trusts that we operate. In this particular case, when we launched into Virage, there were 70,000 partners that use zero. So two years later, we think before the end of that next year, there was 150,000 partners. If we fast forward just two years, there's now over 550,000 partners globally using this platform. So their growth is hyper and you can just imagine the growth curve of a business that's gone from 49,000 to over 500,000 in that short time window and growing a $2 billion SaaS business in that short time. That's all driven by the community. That's all driven by people like Jonathan that are out there representing a technology movement and looking at the way in which businesses can embrace this type of technology to make themselves more profitable. And we're all in business. We all understand that profit is so important. You know, if you haven't read some of the books out there about driving profits to the bottom line, and I think it's uh, Patrick Lencioni's book on uh, profit first is a classic example of that. And that's one of those challenges that business owners have is driving profit. Well, how do you drive profit? You can either reduce your variable costs, you can reduce your fixed costs, or you can increase your revenues and hopefully the, you know, the, the top line drops down to the bottom line, which isn't always the case. Technologies like Xero help you to manage that process. And I think that's what is really inflating that hyper growth is the fact that it's so needed. And, you know, we've been in an industry now for you know, quite a long time, at least 10 years, I saw stagnation in the technology evolution of accounting systems. They were just basically sitting on their laurels and that's industry wide, whether it was the UK, Australia, New Zealand or the US, technology platforms weren't necessarily innovating at the speed that they are now. It took Xero and a few others to disrupt and that's what became the focus point moving forward. Hmm. Now, I want to change tack just a little bit. Um, we've talked a little bit about Ysync, and we'll talk a bit more about that. But you're going to be attending ConnectWise IT Nation in Florida, um, and that's in a couple of weeks' time, isn't it? It is, yes, it is. It's, uh, it's coming up very, very quickly. We are attending. We're launching a new product called WisePay. And we, we attended IT Nation last year as a vendor. We, we, you know, we were very successful in handing out uh, over 600 t-shirts with our Sync Ninja emblazoned on it. And it's funny because I see pictures tweeted around of people, people wearing our t-shirts in random places that I don't even know who they are. So if you've got a <laughs> Sync Ninja t-shirt, please wear it because I love to see that, that sort of brand awareness getting outside of our community. So, but from a, a learnings perspective, we went to IT Nation last year and Zero was very new. It was still, people didn't know who it was. They had no above the line marketing. There was very little brand awareness in the US. And we took ourselves there as the start of something new. And what we came out of IT Nation last year was, with, was a list of barriers. The barriers were, how do I process payments? How do I change to cloud accounting and get on board? And effectively, what's it going to cost and how am I going to get there? So there was, that were the three key areas that we had to find answers for. 
Payments was a big one because credit card payment is obviously a preferred form of payment in the US. We needed to make that simple and easy. The onboarding part was a little bit more complex because everyone's different, whether you're moving from QuickBooks or whether you're moving from Sage or whether you're moving from MYOB in Australia. We had to find a better way to help partners and to progress them across from desktop accounting to the cloud. The conversion process was certainly something that shouldn't be taken lightly. It's something that needs to be planned and it needs to be executed. And we needed to find those two answers. So this year we've come back with WisePay and WisePay is a online payment platform that integrates with some of the world's largest payment providers. So we've integrated with Authorize.net, Braintree, Stripe and Integra Pay. And those four providers are our first set of providers. What that's going to allow us to do is allow partners to choose who they will actually want to accept payments through. That gives them the choice to select whoever they want for their online payment platform. And what we're doing is we're changing the process by finding more efficient ways. So integrating to ConnectWise, Quozal, Xero, as well as direct integration via uh, HTML buttons in email templates. So you can put a, a Pay Now button in your ConnectWise email template, Richard, if you probably remember, you could never change that email, you could never change that invoice in ConnectWise at all. We've now worked out the process of integrating to the ConnectWise and Quozal interfaces. So that now gives full transparency through to accept payments from from those two different payment sources. But where we're making the big change is about automation. So we're giving partners the ability to manage direct debits and credit cards directly through that invoice flow through ConnectWise. Because we have that direct integration into Xero and QuickBooks Online, we can provide better workflow processes. So if you use Quozal, you probably know the challenges of accepting upfront payments and what that means. You just end up with a chunk of money landing in your bank account and you've got to dig through three systems to try and find what that money actually relates to. So what we've done is we've identified the process and as part of that, we actually create the prepayment for you in your accounting system as part of the transaction as soon as that person clicks, pay now. And that process is about reducing the amount of administrative burden that's required to accept credit card payments. And for partners around the world, different regions have different rules. In Australia, one of the great things is that we can pass on the credit card surcharge. So we've been able to manage that process dynamically, giving partners the flexibility to set the credit card surcharge that they'd like to pass on by a percentage of the transaction amount, but also giving them flexibility to call it something that they want. So they might call it the reward point accumulation fee, or they could call it just a processing fee, whichever one they wanted to call. But the benefit there is they can have the flexibility to pass on a service charge if their area doesn't allow a credit card surcharge per se. Paul, you, you're going to you're really going to clean up with this product, aren't you? <laughs> I mean, you're addressing problems here that, you know, were around back when I was a ConnectWise partner years ago that, that you know, there's still uh, big challenges for MSPs today. Um, where do you see the product going in the future? What's, what's the next big hurdle for you? Well, the biggest hurdle for us is about getting the product right because we've been focusing so much on what we do and how we want to improve process. And once we've, now we have that product, which has just gone to market in a private release, and the feedback's been phenomenal. And that's where, you know, our, our big launch for IT Nation is WisePay. So you're going to see that on the lanyards. You're going to see there's a lot of, um, you know, we're going to have a lot of exposure and, and, you know, a lot of activity happening around our new product launch because we're excited. But where we're even more excited about IT Nation is we've actually got the GM of Zero coming down. So global global manager of Zero, Jamie Sutherland, is actually flying into IT Nation for us to come and talk about their experience in building a two billion dollar SaaS business and that's something that we just can't believe that we've got the global head of a company willing to come and share with us and share with our community a small community of ConnectWise partners what they actually did and share those anecdotes and I'm just pumped about that in itself because you know, here's a guy that's worked at Sage he worked at Sage for a number of years in their small business department he was obviously brought across to Zero to head up their US division. He was the, the president of Zero up until about six months ago, but now he's the global GM. So that's a pretty good indication of the level of output that he's had at Zero. And if you look at that growth curve and the excitement that's being built in the UK, it really is testament to that. If you're coming to IT Nation, make sure you book in for that session because it's going to fill up very quickly. And it's something that we're excited about as well. So 
to answer the question, are we going to really clean up with this product? <laughs> Look, that wasn't the reason why we built WisePay. We built it for us first. We needed it because we were wasting so much time reconciling the direct debits that we would charge on every month for all our agreement customers. And there's about 90 of them in our managed services business. So that was an extensive process that we've basically completely eradicated by building this product. And it may only be six hours a month that we save by pulling that time back from an admin team member, but it's about accuracy. It's about making sure that what gets charged is correct, not missing to update a, a direct debit for one of our customers. And we do have some fairly large amounts that we debit from our customers. So the last thing that we would want to do is accidentally debit them twice or potentially have the wrong amount and have to try and manage that process through reconciliation. So for us, it's about solving problems. WiseSync was that first. WisePay is the next forefront for our technology change. And that's where we're seeing now that the product in its own right is really going to change the way that managed services companies accept payment. And as part of that, improve cash flow. And if you know anything about finance management in your business, there's two key drivers to liquidity, and that is day sales outstanding and obviously getting paid. Those two things, keeping your AR low. And if we look at what you can do in your business, if, you're, if, you're, if you have an exit strategy and if you're looking to really maximize the value, those two key drivers are going to help improve your multiples of earnings because DSO is one of those factors that businesses look at for the viability. It's the, the fact is that you've got low sales outstanding, so therefore you, you're keeping that money moving through your business and that helps in evaluation prospect as well. So it's clear from our conversation the community is very important um, uh, to both of your businesses there. You're, you're a ConnectWise partner. You're a Zero partner. You're also a member of HTG, Heartland Technology Group, uh, we've talked about here. Um, my MSP, uh, back in the day when I was an MSP owner, was a ConnectWise partner and a member of HTG as well. Uh, for the benefit of listeners, uh, tell, uh, tell us a little bit more about those two relationships, ConnectWise and HTG, those communities, how they've helped your MSP and how they've helped Ysync as well? Well, definitely from a, a business perspective, you know, I've been in business now for, for close to 15 years. And uh, when I look back over the last two years is where I've really started to get a level of maturity in terms of what it is that our businesses are doing. So, you know, we grew very quickly in Virage. We've, you know, nearly doubled in size in that time through acquisition. And what we're looking at now is, is obviously the next five years strategy. And I've always been someone that set goals and I'd always set, you know, little targets that I'd be working towards. But one of the things that really changed the way we managed and the way that we looked to the future was HTG. And that's because we actually had to start and sit down and work through some of those key areas, the life goals, the legacy plans, the business plans. They're the things, the leadership plans, the things that matter in business. Now, they're the things that actually help keep you accountable as a business owner. Now, the saying is it's lonely at the top. Well, and that's true because you're not accountable to anyone else. And I looked at HTG more as an accountability group, as an opportunity to have a board where a board didn't exist, to have peers that I respected hold me accountable on things that I knew that I needed to do. And that for me was one of the things that helped really grow Virage and continues to help grow Virage because we continue to look at the strategy, the plans to help us grow into that next phase of our business. And it's interesting because you see in the industry and you see around us some of the other products like Desk Director and IT Glue, and there's a number of other companies that have come through the same paces. And MSP built a platform and took it to market. And it's interesting how that transition from MSP to SaaS is, is embraced inside of that community. And you see it and you see it time and time again that um, you know businesses that have similar values and can have similar constructs around what their industry is, we all use ConnectWise, so we all have the same challenges. We all understand where we want to get to. And that's one of the great things about our product is that we built it for us. And as a successful MSP, other businesses around us in our HTG peer groups are looking at us saying, well, why sinks a no-brainer? Because look what it does even for simple things like preparing my SLI. And if you don't know SLI's Service Leadership Index, which is the benchmarking framework that's used by the HTG peer groups to keep us all honest, I'd have to say. It keeps us honest because we can all present our financials in a way that's uniform. 
which is effectively to benchmark each business against the best in class. And as part of our process of making sure we weren't spending too much time preparing our SLI, we developed a standard set of chart of accounts. And with that, we also developed a report that would produce directly out of our accounting system for the input straight into SLI. So if you remember, Richard, the pain and suffering you used to go through in preparing your SLI figures quarterly. Uh, I, takes, can never, I can never forget it. You've got to, you can never <laughs> wash it away. So the great thing from a, a ConnectWise and Zero and Ysync perspective is with that standard structure, with the correct setup and configuration, and with a special report that we've written for Zero, you can actually produce your SLIs in under a minute. And that's something that when we look at businesses around us in our HTG peer groups here in Australia, we've probably got about 80% of the HTG peer group here in Australia using zero. And that's a powerful testament to the fact that these businesses are all very similar size in terms of you have to be within a certain band to get into HTG. So therefore, you know, we're all looking for efficiencies and the efficiencies that have been driven are really about getting systems to deliver outcomes more effectively. Mm. And for the benefit of listeners, if you want to know more about HTG or ConnectWise IT Nation, we'll make sure there's links uh, to those organizations and those events within the show notes. Uh, and also a quick shout out because Phil Claxton of Dex Desk Director, who you mentioned was a guest on episode two of this podcast. Chris Day of IT Glue was, an epi- uh, was a guest on episode 10. So two great interviews to check out there as well for two great companies. Now, what are, uh, there's going to be uh, MSPs listening to this who perhaps uh, are using uh, traditional desktop accounting packages like Sage and thinking, wow, this all sounds great, this Zero stuff and this Ysync, this all sounds wonderful. But man, it's going to be a lot of work migrating our existing accounts away uh, to a cloud accounting package. What advice would you have to give to them? It's not that hard. <laughs> it really isn't. <laughs> it's a process okay. that you, you can go through and, and we have special onboarding plans. If you um, go rewind a few minutes, you would have heard me talk about the challenges that we had at IT Nation last year or the challenges that, that partners presented to us and said, we love your product. The things that you do are just exactly the pain points that we have. And we just don't know how we're going to get there. And we couldn't give them answers. We couldn't say, look, we're going to take you from Sage to zero and it's going to be the best thing that you've done and you're going to thank us at the end. So what we had to go away with was we had to come back with a process to manage that. And the process is, of course, to offer a service to be able to deliver that particular outcome. So to work with you closely on moving your accounting system from one place to another. The process is very well laid out and structured and we work with zero certified partners to help manage that process as well as having a clear understanding of what ConnectWise should and should not look like. And that's one of the biggest challenges that we face is that unfortunately most partners that are coming across, their ConnectWise isn't in the best state and that usually is that they don't have the greatest level of understanding of how the GL mappings work. So what we normally do is we we actually give them the framework to operate inside of. So we take our best practices that we've implemented for hundreds of partners and many HTG members around getting that streamlined financial reporting into your accounting system. The financial visibility of your business is improved and that can only mean one thing, better, more financially astute business decisions and that's something you should really take pride in understanding that that's what businesses are getting out of moving to the cloud, not just process efficiencies in that way. Mm, Makes a lot of sense. Now, you're very open and honest about your pricing. And I've got to say, uh, looking at your website, I love the names that you've given to your pricing packages. Um, For the benefit of listeners, could you share a little bit about those now? Yeah, so the the pricing was, it's one of those things. Like, obviously, if you look at SaaS products now, they're they're all these little, you know, pricing names. And we went through what we class or what was called a brand journey. We understood what we were looking to do and we looked at the pillars of our brand and what we actually set to do. What we were there to do was to, to be the, the, the hero in the background, the ninja as such. So uh, our primary plan is called the Sync Ninja and that product is, is obviously all the features that you need if you're running inventory and procurement in ConnectWise. But for the little guys, it sort of scales down to the mini-me plan. And we, we recognize that some businesses just have a very small requirement. So they may only have to do 30-odd invoices a month. So we've got the plans to help support 
different phases of business. But we recognize that transactionally, as you move up the tree, you're going to be doing more and more transactions. Therefore, you're going to need to go into the higher plan. So the Sync Ninja is really our, our premium plan. It's designed for nearly most of the businesses that we interact with. But of course, we've got Mr. Miyagi. And Mr. Miyagi is he's whatever you need him to be. So you can wax on and wax off to your heart's content. Uh, we basically build a plan to suit. And we've got a number of partners on those plans, especially ones where they have multiple companies. So they've got multiple organizations and that they need to sync through to. Or if they're doing thousands of records a month, then that's where we need to obviously build a plan to support their requirements. And that would include factors of support as well. So helping to make sure that we've got um, you know, a level of support because more complex environments have more complex needs in support. And that's not something you can normally address in, a, in an email thread. So we obviously offer phone and, and remote access support as well to those partners that need it. Fabulous. I love it. So, hey, Paul, can I put you on the spot here? Um, can I ask you some, some rapid fire questions, if I would? And you don't have to give uh, detailed answers, but you know, we'll, we'll just go for it and see where you go. Certainly. The uh, first one is you've referred to yourself as both a technician and a process person um, in the past. What would you say you are now and why? I would like to say that I'm a thought leader. And really the, the main process or the reason why I've gone from a technician and a process person to a thought leader is about helping businesses to understand the concepts and the constructs of what their business should look like and how they should use the technology that they already have to their most successful advantage. And I think by being a thought leader, we I work with people and I get so much enjoyment out of actually helping businesses to get clear alignment from their own inputs and outputs. And as nerdy as what it sounds, accounting is something that although I'm passionate about, my passion is about helping businesses to realize where they're going and to how to actually get there through financial clarity and visibility. Great answer. Fantastic. And you're definitely a thought leader. You know, you've, you've shared some absolute gold dust in the last, uh, in, in during this conversation. So thank you for that. Next question. Which book have you read that's impacted you the most and why? Oh, gee, that's a good one. Um, I did say I was putting you on the spot here. Yeah, I would have to say, look, I'm, I'm not a huge book reader. Um, I, I tend to probably read about the first 20 pages and then get sidetracked. I'm, I'm a bit of Mr. Everywhere. I'd have to say the book that had the most profound um, consideration in my mind is probably The Go-Giver, um, Bob Berg and John David Mann, I think it was. Um, that's a book that's actually given to every HTG member and it's a small book so I did quite well with it. Uh, I finished it and it actually taught me some basic principles and the, the concepts of giving first and, and then you, you'll see the value later. And that was one of the things that we really, we, I wanted to focus on with WiseSync by, by really helping partners to see that there's people out there that understand the, the challenges that they have and have practical real world answers to the problems that they're facing. And one of the things that if you have a look at the ConnectWise marketplace, we've got 54 five-star reviews for our product. And it's, it's easy to get a review in terms of, you know, anyone can click the five stars and click submit and say, hey, this product's really great. But when you actually go onto the ConnectWise marketplace and you see the listings of the reviews that we have for YSync and you actually read them, you see that these are heartfelt messages of people saying, you have changed my life through this application. And I, I don't know any other accounting applications where you have people say, I love you in a, in a ConnectWise marketplace review. But the reality is what it changes is people suffer day in and day out with some of the manual administrative processes inside of ConnectWise. And the single thing that we change that we haven't even touched on, so here's a little bit more gold dust for you, Richard. We created single record batches. And what that means is that every single record that you close and send out to your customers is batched individually in an identifiable batch inside of ConnectWise. Doesn't sound like rocket science, but I tell you what, the change that that made in our business and many businesses around us is profound. Because if you have to reverse a single batch, it's a single record. And that came from the pain and frustration that I had many years ago in, in syncing to desktop accounting. I accidentally opened a batch and it had 100 invoices in it. And then I accidentally hit sync again and it duplicated 100 invoices into my accounting system. 
And Ouch. if you know, most accounting systems don't let you delete records from them. So then you've got to avoid them or you've got to credit them. So I created two days work for our bookkeeper just by a simple mistake that I made. And that was one of the things that I'm like, I have to find an answer to this because this is ridiculous. I cannot have this as a, as a solution in my business. And that's what really kicked me in the, in the pants and said, go on Bill Weissink. And going back to the book, The Go-Giver gave me the insight into how I should actually operate and really affirm the value that we present to partners. We have a tiny fractional micro niche market. There's 8,000 partners globally that use ConnectWise. Of that, probably only 750 would be in the market of using a cloud accounting platform because most of them use desktop accounting or enterprise platforms like Great Plains. And of those two, 750, we have 250 already using our platform. We can see that growing and we can see that going through the roof. And that's one of the powerful things that as a thought leader, as someone that gives back to the community, as someone that our name and our brand is represented so well that people get really excited to represent us and wear that Sync Ninja t-shirt, even if it isn't at a ConnectWise event. It's fascinating to hear you mention um, The Go-Giver as a book there. It had a profound effect on uh, my life when I read it. When people ask me that same question, you know, which books had the most effect on you? Um, life-changing books almost. E-Myth um, by Michael Gerber, Getting Things Done by David Allen. Those are two around process. But the one that I always cite the most is The Go-Giver by John David Mann and Bob Berg because of the outlook on life, you know, just the, uh, the, the view that it gives you for changing how you go about living your life and how you go about doing business so um, it's a common thread uh, in most of the conversations I have with the the most successful people in the industry of which I count you amongst them so uh, really fascinating to hear the go-givers on your list there as well so final rapid fire question and then I'll let you off the hook Paul so who is the most successful person or persons you know and why oh you've got some good questions Richard uh, who is the most <laughs> successful person that I know Look, I'd have to say, oh, there's the usuals, uh, you know, Richard Branson and, you know, all the other guys are, that we can obviously throw names out there. But it's, it's a hard question to answer because everyone has success in different ways. And, you know, I'd have to have a look at, you know, people, even people in my direct vicinity, like guys like, you know, Chris Day from IT Glue. You know, I look at what he's done with Fully Managed and I aspire to that in my MSP business, to be able to have that level of commitment and clarity in his business that he has. And then looking at you know, other people in the industry, even like Arnie Bellini and David Bellini, the Bellini brothers who have obviously founded ConnectWise, you know, a vision of building a platform that would help IT industry take it to the next level. One of the challenges, especially in our culture, is it's called the tall poppy syndrome. And that's where people that stand out above can often be cut down, you know, in terms of the value that they present. And we often criticize technology platforms because they don't do all this, you know, product is aging and they're not, they're not changing quickly enough. But at the same time, you look at what these guys have built, whether it's, you know, someone like Chris or the guys like Arnie and David, you know, these people around us are building platforms and building enablement systems for us to actually go to the next phase of our business. And look, we use IT Glue in our business, in, in actually all of our businesses, because we saw it as such a critical part of what we do. And, you know, without saying, because Chris, if he's listening to this, is going to be like, wow, I can't believe you just he named me as one of the people that I, that I look up to. But definitely people in the thought leadership space that I aspire to be like are people that just go out there and make it happen. And men of action or women of action. And these guys are one of those. So congratulations, you've made my list. <laughs> Great answer. As I said, Chris was a, uh, a guest on episode 10 of this podcast and we had such, such positive feedback about that interview. So uh, I can totally understand um, uh, why you look up to Chris in that way. Uh, just, a, just a great guy doing great work there. So. So we're reaching a stage where um, we're going to wrap up the interview. I've uh, taken up enough of your time for now, but I'd like to ask you one final question just on the subject of um, uh, cloud accounting packages. For any MSPs who are still manually running reports and importing and exporting data and going through all of the headaches that we've talked about um, in our interview today between their accounting packages and their PSA, what would you have to say to them? I think they've already got the answer. They know that they need to change. 
And I think now's the time to actually take out a pen and paper if, or grab the calculator out of your, your drawer or you know, type calc into your window start bar and bring the calculator up and calculate the value of your time. The time you spend wasting processing information to manual systems or potentially you know, manually rekeying into your, into your accounting system, it's just not worth the time and effort that you spend doing it. And you can spend better time growing your business, focusing on things that matter. And the, the process of change is not as scary as what it seems. It's really about adapting and embracing that change. And in business, we have to do that. I said that at the start, that our, our industry is changing, where our margins are being compressed, our products are being commoditized. Everything about what we're doing has to change and you have to become more efficient. And the best way for you to do that is to look at some of those manual processes and look to technologies that can help you get to that, that outcome that you're looking for. And certainly cloud accounting, without doubt, has been the biggest positive change in our business from a process and from a business maturity perspective. So it's time to change. Fantastic. Well, look, Paul, it's been an absolute pleasure um, talking to you uh, over the last hour. I've really appreciated all of the value bombs that you've uh, uh, delivered here. I think there's uh, going to be great feedback for this uh, podcast. If anybody wants to reach out to you directly or find out more about WiseSync or WisePay um, or indeed Veraj, um, how would they go about uh, contacting you? Well, look, certainly, Richard, put those details on your website because I'm more than happy to field questions or, you know, where possible, jump on a phone call we do operate on the other side of the world to you if you're in the UK so you know time is is quite challenging but certainly you know I'm all about helping because I realize that we've got a number of partners in the US that are willing to have open conversations about the move from sage to zero and to talk in ways that you would see on the ConnectWise marketplace. So certainly, um, Richard, share my details and you know I'd love to connect with, with partners out there that are looking to make positive change in their business because for me, that's the number one thing that I look for is, is getting businesses to that next level. Brilliant. Well, we'll put those details in the show notes. Paul, thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Richard, thank you. I hope you agree with me. Paul McNeil of Ysync, an absolutely fantastic guest, dropping lots of value bombs there for any IT business owner. If you're going along to ConnectWise IT Nation in November in Florida, I'd encourage you to seek Paul out. Say hello as a listener to this podcast. Now, as always, you can find the show notes featuring all the links and resources Paul and I spoke about during our interview over at my blog at www.tublog.co.uk. And you can also find the video version of my interview with Paul, along with a ton of other expert interviews, over at my YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash rtub. That's R T U double B. One final thing I'd like to ask is for you to perhaps take 30 seconds to jump over to iTunes to rate this podcast. I'd be very grateful for that, as it really does help the show get in front of more people like yourself. Um, so I want to thank you as the listener for joining me today. I know you've got a wide choice of podcasts that you can listen to, so I really do appreciate you've chosen to spend your time listening to me. Thanks, and I hope to see you in person very soon. Hey team, this is Richard again. Just one more thing before you take off and that is MSP Insights. Now every Tuesday I share my thoughts on the business of IT with you, the managed service community. Thousands of managed service providers already subscribe to MSP Insights. It's easy to sign up, easy to cancel. MSP Insights is basically a short email from me every Tuesday without fail with advice on growing your IT business plus cool resources I found, discovered or started exploring that week. It's kind of like my diary of cool things and often includes articles or books I've read, tools I've discovered and events I think you'd be interested in, often sent to me by my friends and Tub Talk podcast guests. So if that sounds fun, a short tiny bite of MSP goodness every Tuesday and you'd like to try it out, just go to go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. That's go.tub.co forward slash Tuesday. Drop in your email and you'll get the very next one. Thanks for listening.